was either really kind of like a joke and a bit of a puzzle or something to it. Uh, and the one I can always remember is like, what blocks on four legs, then on two legs, then on three legs. And now look, it's time to start the show. Uh, happy, happy January, everyone. Uh, I was telling a riddle. Well, it's not much of a It's the Sphinx's riddle, which they ask some Greek guy. Uh, what walks on four legs and on two legs and on three legs? And you're like, man, because first you crawl and then you walk and then you have a cane. And I'm like, well, what if you die before the cane? <laughs> or there there have been kids that totally skipped the crawling stage, went straight to the walking stage. <laughs> Or what if what if you don't need a cane, you need crutches? I mean, it would be like what it would... I was on crutches for a while, so it was like four legs, two legs, four legs, three legs, <laughs> no legs. It, riddles don't make a darn bit of sense, especially if the Sphinx is asking you. Uh, anyway, first thing, uh, I'm going to... We, we have a huge staff here for the show. Uh, you don't see them very often, and we don't put them in the credits because the unions don't require it. Because I'm not unionized. This is a non-union show. Um, uh, but so I don't, put any, I don't put any of the people... But I'm going to make a whole room full of makeup people just lose their minds. Just watch. Just wait. Watch for it. Okay? They're happy right now. They're looking at the show. Okay? <laughs> makeup people! Makeup people are unhappy now. Okay? I don't, I don't know if you could hear them, but there was a scream I could hear from a building and a half over. Uh... You're allowed to wear a Santa hat for the month of December. But come January 1st, you got to put your Santa hats back in the attic where they belong. I mean, true, they're nice hats. They're warm hats. You're not allowed to wear them. Terribly sorry, world. Not allowed to wear Santa hats after January 1st. You have 31 days. And if, like me, you forget to bring it down from the attic for a week and a half, you have, you know, 22 days to wear a Santa hat. Um, uh, sponsorship. Uh, we did get a sponsor for new Keith Explained shirts. Uh, they're kind of cheap. You can see we, we only went one color printing because <laughs> the sponsor was cheap. Um, but we do have the new shirts. Uh, you're, you're welcome to buy them. I think they're $35 in the store. They might be $39. I don't remember. They gave me one for free. Um, other, other than shirts, uh, sponsorship opportunities are, are performing terribly. Um, uh, the car sponsor continues to not come through. Uh, I think I've mentioned it before. I drive uh, at least two days a week. And I would be willing to drive your car if you gave it to me. <laughs> and I would even try to drive it somewhat nicely. like Not like a complete idiot on the road. Because I, I, I think if, if you're a car sponsorship type person, you always wonder, is this person I'm going to give a car to drive like an idiot and make people think, Ford drivers. I hate Ford drivers. I hate Fords. Right? Because some idiot's driving a Ford badly. And I'm just, I don't want to besmirch the Ford people. If the Ford people have a sponsorship group that would be willing to sponsor the Keith Explains car. And we can even get it wrapped. We can get it wrapped with Keith Explains. It's going to be a big smiling picture of me in all four sides of the car. You know, when you're driving down the road, you could look over and there could be, there could be me. And, and on the door beneath me, it could be me. Okay? It's... Think of think of how exciting that would be, uh, the, the 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 zebra cola people uh, have been sponsoring us for a while, but they decided to stop because apparently they don't got seventy five cents a month. Uh, I was like, that's that's what we charge them. They gave us seventy five cents a month, and I drink zebra cola on the show every week, every month. Uh, big big can of zebra cola. <laughs> But no, they don't want to do it anymore. They were like, you need to drink something else. And I'm like, fine, I'm going to drink Panda Cola or something. I'll, <laughs> I'll come up with it. Uh, I'm willing to be seen with your products for enough money, I guess is my point. Um, uh, sponsorships, uh, I mentioned that. Uh, if you haven't received the Keith Explains Christmas card, that's because I didn't send them. Uh, I was thinking about sending out Keith Explains Christmas cards, and I realized I... I get a lot of Christmas cards from people I know, and every time I get a Christmas card, I think, man, I haven't sent my Christmas cards yet. But I keep getting Christmas cards because I keep sending Christmas cards. So I've decided to bite the bullet. I'm not sending them no more. And within 15 years, I'm thinking people will have stopped sending me Christmas cards, and then finally I can be happy. <laughs> or lonely. I don't know. It could be, could be one or the other. 
Um, I guess on the topic, uh, on the topic of, I, I threw the hat on the floor already, but as long as we're talking about Santa Claus, uh, in December, I participated in the San Jose, San Jose Santa Fun Run, uh, in which I and 2,792 of my closest friends dressed up like Santa Claus and sprinted through downtown San Jose. Although I didn't sprint, because I, I haven't sprinted since I was 17, I don't think. As I recall, there was a gym class, and there was a it's time for the sprint trials, Keith, and I sprinted. Uh, no, that's not true. There was once in college that I sprinted uh, to a test that I had forgotten about until I woke up because the phone was ringing, and the phone was ringing because my friend was at the test going, Keith, where are you? The test is in five minutes. So I sprinted to the test. And I got there all sweaty, like half an hour late, because it was the other side of campus. And my friend, who was, who was diligently doing the test, was there. And he looked over, and he's like, and I'm like, and then I did the test, and I got a higher score than he did. <laughs> so that'll, that'll learn you. Uh, in some vague sense. Anyway, I did the Santa Fun Run, uh, and people say, Keith, why did you do it? Uh, and I, I didn't have an answer when someone asked me that. <laughs> so I was, I was forced to reflect. And I was like, well, I'm, I'm trying to remember back. I mean, certainly there was a time I wasn't signed up for the Santa Fun Run. And then there was a point in time when I was signed up for it. And I... I was trying to remember what happened between those two <laughs> points in time. I was like, what? 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 What was I thinking? And then the only th and I honestly can't remember when it seemed like a good idea. <laughs> it certainly didn't seem like a good idea when I started the Santa Fun Run, because I said, I have just paid for a, well, it was, it was, it was a cheap but nice Santa outfit. And I am about to run through downtown San Jose, and I don't run at all. <laughs> I did another run. My friend Ben, he was like, hey, you did okay. And I'm like, yeah, I never run. He's like, what does that mean? I'm like, I haven't sprinted since college. He's like, yeah, but don't you exercise? I'm like, no. <laughs> no, I don't. I pride myself on not running. <laughs> Every morning I wake up and think, maybe today will be the day I don't run. <laughs> and then every day I go to bed and I'm like, victory! <laughs> I, I had years of not running when I decided to sign up for this. And I, I think on reflection, the thing that occurred to me that was, that they're like, well, maybe it'll be fun. Uh, and if you're sitting at home watching this, Maybe it will be fun. <laughs> but with a lot of things, I think it's a thing that's fun only long after <laughs> it's done. Because during the Santa Fun Run, first of all, I, I made a couple mistakes after the first mistake, which was signing up to do any run <laughs> at all. Uh, the second mistake was like, like a week before, I was like, my shoes are pretty old. I should maybe buy some new running shoes. It'll be cushiony since I'll be running on the ground again, and my feet hurt. And then I didn't think about it for six more days. <laughs> and then I was like, look, it's 8 o'clock. The night before the run, maybe I should go buy some new shoes. <laughs> so I went to a shoe store. Shoe stores have changed since I was 8. Uh, when I was 8, you'd go to a shoe store, uh, and a nice middle-aged man, who I assume hated his life, uh, would come out and he would measure your feet and then he would go through a curtain and then he would come back with a box of shoes and you would put them on and then he would say walk around and then you would make like a little four foot circle and then you would say feel good as if you can tell whether shoes are going to fit or not in 11 steps and then your parents would pay for the shoes and then you would leave and you'd be done uh, now when you go to a shoe store you're like, where are the shoes? And they're like, back there. And then you go back and there are just aisles of boxes of shoes. And then you're like, when is the nice man going to come out through the curtain? And then you look around and there's no door with a curtain. <laughs> and there's no, there's no nice, life-hating man there. 
No, you're expected to find your own shoe and then with a box with numbers in the front and then go, well, maybe I'm a nine and a half. And then you try on the shoe. But no, no, it didn't work because apparently nine and a half, I looked this up, uh, third most popular men's shoe size. They didn't carry it. <laughs> Hadn't occurred to them they might need to have a couple nine and a halfs in the store. No, they had plenty of seven and a halfs. Not many people wear seven and a halfs. Uh, they had a lot of 13 and three quarters. I don't think a lot of people wear 13 and three quarters, but maybe some do. Nine, they didn't, didn't occur to them to carry nine and a half. That's not quite true. They had one pair of nine and a halfs. Because eventually I went and asked someone and said, I'm looking for nine and a halfs. And he's like, oh, we don't have a lot of those. <laughs> like, I noticed. And he's like, maybe go look back there. And I went back there. And there was this special section of shoes. And it was all glittery. <laughs> they had little security ropes around it. And a door guy. And you like said, I need to look at the shoes. And the guy was like, okay, you can go in. And then you go through the little ropes. And then they had all the shoe sizes there. $450 for a pair of shoes. <laughs> My feet are not worth $450. Not even collectively. Not even like two twenty five dollars a foot. Uh, the internet has ruined me because long ago, I just, it, if I need shoes, I think I need shoes. Let me go to that shoe website. And then I go to my browser and I type shoe website. And then like the first hit is always Zappos. And after I've typed shoe website and hit return, while in that billionth of a second, while Google is like, should we give this guy Zappos again or should we rock his world and tell him... There's another place he can buy shoes. <laughs> no, give him Zappos again. So I, then it's, I remember Zappos, and I'm like, I could have just typed Zappos. I mean, that's quicker than shoe website. Uh, but I go to Zappos, and then I go, I want to find a pair of black shoes, nine and a half. I don't want crappy laces. Yeah. I really don't want crappy laces. <laughs> then I hit search, and the only real results that come back are shoes with crappy laces. So I'm like, okay, I'll buy those. <laughs> and then for some reason, after I click buy, every time, Zappos says, because you're such a special customer, we're going to give you free shipping. Don't tell anyone. I'm like, I buy shoes like once a year. How can I be a special customer? But I assume they've looked in my search history and realized I'm the idiot that types shoe warehouse. <laughs> <laughs> they've been paying for those words for a long time. So they give me a deal. They give me... Um, where was I? Oh, yeah, Santa's Fun Run, right? So, mistake number two, regular shoes. Um, and then mistake number three, I think, was, although they gave me a complete Santa outfit, I went, that hat looks a little cheesy. I'll wear my good Santa hat, which, as it turns out, is made of asbestos. Because <laughs> shortly after I started running, my head reached a temperature of the boiling point of water uh, and I had the Santa mask on or the Santa beard this fake Santa beard because you got to wear the Santa beard in the Santa run there are people I saw running without the beard and those people were doing it wrong uh, is all I'm gonna say and it's it's like a five kilometer run but unlike I did the turkey trot a month earlier so now I can compare fun runs it's almost like I'm an athlete uh, for, for the Santa Fun Run, you ran out in a line, and then you ran back along the same course to the finish line, which was at Christmas in the Park in San Jose, where they had milk and cookies. Uh, so the whole race started, and like 11 minutes into the race, the people who were winning, right, ran back past us losers. Uh, and the first guy that went past me was not dressed like Santa. And I think if you get to the finish line of a Santa run, and they're like, your time is 18 minutes, congratulations. Oh, wait, you didn't wear the Santa suit, you lose. <laughs> okay? It was like the eighth or ninth guy that had any Santa stuff on him at all, and he didn't have the beard on. Uh, I kept track. It was like the 30th guy that came past me, which, again, he was running much faster than I was, but at least he had the beard on. So I... <laughs> 
mentally made that guy the winner. <laughs> so if you're that guy and you're watching this TV show, just email me and I will send you back an authentic Santa Run winner certificate. <laughs> signed by two. And you can frame it, or not frame it, just stick it to your wall with tape. It's equally valid either way. Um, so there I am running through San Jose dressed like Santa, with the beard and the sweating and the hat. And I think it was at about mile one and a half that I thought, this, this is not going to end well. <laughs> um, and then a little while later I went, why am I still running? I know how to walk, for God's sakes. <laughs> so I stopped and walked for a little while, and I went, well, I better run, because I looked it up, and, and half the people signed up for the race are women, and they're all passing me and making me feel dumb. <laughs> so I started running again. Uh, and then after a while I got tired again and started to walk. And then I was, I was kind of walking. I was trying to walk a little briskly. And by that I mean slow. I was, I was not <laughs> I was slow. I was walking slow. Uh, and then a pair of four-year-olds ran past me. <laughs> <laughs> I, don't, I don't know if the four-year-olds have been running the entire race. Because <laughs> they weren't dressed like Santa. I don't recall if they had numbers. They may have just lived a block up and been running two blocks over. But it occurred to me... I would really feel stupid if I got to the finish line. <laughs> there were two four-year-olds there. Not dressed like Santa. No beard, no nothing. Ahead of me. Uh, so I persevered and managed to fin finish the Santa race in like 40 minutes. Which is bad. Really <laughs> bad. Uh, mentally in my head I did the math. I said, well that's, that's three miles in 40 minutes. So that means I'm running an eight-hour marathon. <laughs> and that made me feel better until I realized most people don't run eight-hour marathons. They run three-hour marathons. Those, I think, are the marathon. Like, I don't remember how long the first guy ran the marathon, but you got to assume, well, he did it badly because I think he died at the end. But <laughs> <coughs> Anyway... Uh, Words of wisdom, people, there in your home. Uh, upon reflection, a Santa fun run will seem like fun. Uh, but it's better if before you do it, you go to your doctor and you take those drugs that make you forget real time. Uh, they gave them to me when they did the thing with my throat. They were like, we're going to give you a drug. And I'm like, yeah, painkiller. Like, no, it's not a painkiller. It just makes you unable to remember everything. So it doesn't occur to you, you were in absolute agony while we were stuffing something down your throat. And I'm like, all right, good enough. Thanks. <laughs> um, it's just past New Year's. Uh, and again, we, we followed the Staten Field New Year's tradition of being boring and sitting in our house and watching TV. Um, now, we don't have kids and we can't occasionally stay up. So we don't do what I'm told is the, the boring parents version which is you act, you tell your children you live on the East Coast and you let them stay up until 9 p.m. and then you go to bed. <laughs> uh, I remember a lot of that as a child. <laughs> now, I, I did live in the Central Time Zone, so you got to assume that, right, I was being allowed to stay up till 11, which was way, way, way past my bedtime, which was 9 p.m. I never saw Charlie's Angels as a child. I'm still distraught about that. Um, I've contemplated uh, legal action against the parents, uh, and my lawyer friends have told me statute of limitations. <laughs> Otherwise, you'd have a great case. You'd have had a great case. You could have you could have prevailed if only the statute of limitations hadn't run out. It also occurred to me that if you're a TV network, and I'm I'm looking at you, Nick at Night, um, you could do great by just time shifting last year's New Year's Eve celebration, the following year. So that kids will think they're staying up late. Like, Nick at Night could just play, you know, the Dick Clark thing at 8.30. <laughs> and all the parents would have to do is just set the clocks ahead, which, I mean, it, it might work. Most parents probably know how to set their clocks ahead. 
Uh, it's not going to work if you're the kind of parent that has to have your kid set your clock ahead. <laughs> uh, and it's not going to work if you're the kind of parent that has a kid you've given an iPhone to. Because <laughs> the iPhone just knows what time it is. Uh, it doesn't always know what day it is, uh, but it does, does know what time it is. Um, anyway, uh, <sighs> whole Christmas thing. Uh, this year, we... We occasionally travel for Christmas. Um, I try not to travel. I hate to travel. People said, Keith, why do you hate to travel? I'm like, I like my stuff. I got all my stuff in my house, and I got it in the places I want it. I want to stay with it. If I go somewhere else, I'm with someone else's stuff. And their stuff's not where I would have put it. It's not the stuff I'd have, and it's not my stuff anyway. So I don't like visiting other people's stuff. I want to stay with my stuff. Um, that works half the time. <laughs> the other half the time, someone says, that's nice, Keith, but we're going to blank. <laughs> <laughs> this year was Branson. <laughs> uh, Branson's in Missouri. Uh, Missouri, for those of you in California, is one of those states you fly over on your way to other interesting places. <laughs> um... I was trying to think how to describe Branson, and then I remembered, Branson is where the Clampets moved to Beverly Hills from. <laughs> <laughs> they, Uncle Jed's cabin, from which he discovered the, the, the black oil, the crude, was somewhere in southern Missouri. Even he was smart enough to leave. <laughs> um... My family moved there of their own free will, like there was no court order or anything. Um, so we went to visit Branson. Um, and I mostly know about Branson because Branson is the butt of a lot of jokes. Because it's where hillbillies go for entertainment, I think. As near as I can tell. And having been there, I think that's a good, that's a good start to something. Oh. Um... We flew there on American Airlines, which I'm, I'm, I, I continue to be believed is now owned by the Taliban. <laughs> um, not just them. I think most most U.S. airlines have to be owned by someone that really hates us. <laughs> um, you know, nothing. I, I sure, my forefathers spent months traveling from the Midwest to California. It only takes me a day, but it's a really miserable day. Like, you, you know, when you play the, the Oregon Trail, sure, you might die of dysentery. <laughs> but, you know, you also... Uh, but, you know, you also... You probably have fun days. There's no fun in an airport. Not at all. Uh, no one... They, 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 I, I don't know how it takes 16 hours to fly to Branson. Somehow it does. 16 stress-filled, cramped, miserable, cold giving you... There's one way I would like to fly. Uh, I was reading about this. Air Force One. Apparently Air Force One is a nice flight. Uh, and I think it's because Air Force One has none of the inconveniences of any other airplane. Uh, Air Force One doesn't wait to take off. When you're, when you're the guy and you get on Air Force One, they close the door and then you take off. There's, there's no endless taxiing and waiting. Uh, the seats at Air Force One are wide and comfortable. Uh, Air Force One never leaves your luggage behind. <laughs> and your luggage never misses a connection if you're flying on Air Force One. So, I'm announcing it now, I'm running for president. <laughs> Merely so that I don't have to fly on commercial airlines ever again. If that's at all possible. <sighs> While we were in Branson, we went to this theme park. Uh, and while at this theme park, uh, Silver Dollar City, uh, we went spelunking. Uh, I don't remember <laughs> whose idea spelunking was, <laughs> but it wasn't mine. Someone said, would you like to go to a cave? And I was like, okay. <laughs> and then we went on a lantern tour of a cave. Here's a word of wisdom, people. Don't go on lantern tours of caves. 
If, if they're going to bother to string electric lights through a cave, make them turn them on. Because <laughs> caves in the dark are boring. <laughs> they're like, there's a huge, you're standing in a huge chamber, and you're like, if only I could see it. <laughs> um, <coughs> and beyond that, um, people in caves want to make them seem all mysterious and creepy. You don't need to do that. It's already a cave. There are probably bats in there. People think bats are creepy. You don't need to make up weird stories about people that died in here 100 years ago. It's not going to frighten me. Uh, it's just going to make me think... You're a weird cave tour guy. <laughs> and then it occurred to me, of course they're a weird cave tour guy. They're they're cave people. Uh, we were. She was like, "Oh, it's great. You're. We've explored much of this cave. Like we've. There's this thing where you get down and you crawl and you crawl and you're. You got to go under the water and back up and crawling. And there's some spots that are very tight. And I'm like, not in a million years. <laughs> Because people are like, well, why wouldn't you do that? And I'm like, well, if you're the tenth guy to crawl down somewhere, you kind of know people can get through. But when you're the first guy, how do you know that that thing doesn't just end or get very tiny so you can't crawl out? They're like, oh, well, that would never happen. And I'm like, no, that would never happen to anyone that lived. <laughs> <laughs> i got to assume caves are full of stupid dead cave explorers. Because it doesn't seem like a good idea. Um, I, I much prefer up top. Lastly, uh, this is a note for a friend of mine. Uh, if you're going to put if you're going to put plates on the electrical outlets in your house, all the screws have to be at exactly the same orientation for the slots. Okay, <laughs> you you can't just catty wampus them. Okay, uh, I think they should all be vertical. But again. That's a question that's best left up to like Martha Stewart. You could go with all horizontal, you can go with all vertical. I think you'd even go with like a, a 45 degree angle, but they all have to agree on, on the, the outlet plate. So that means if you got one of the lights with like three switches, you got six screws, they've all got to be the same. You can't just put them any way you want, okay? I have started carrying a tiny screwdriver so that when I visit people's homes, I can fix their screws, okay? But I, I'm only one man. I can only do so much, okay? You, you people got to meet me halfway, is what I'm saying. That's all the time we have for tonight. I know we, 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 that happened a long time ago. But I had to get through the last couple things. Um, anyway, see you in a month. <sighs> what didn't I even get to? I didn't get to my cat. I'm going to get to the vet again, because it started acting weird. And not weird, like weird. Cats always act weird. And this cat started acting weird in a way that we couldn't scratch and explain. So there's a lot of problems with that. And then she said like four times in her life. Like, because I, I got to assume that are like a mice. They don't want to be crap. They just want to come in and dock you with it. So they put that in and they said, your cat has. Right,